Welcome to an addendum to my regular floss tube that includes my plans for the month of July and part of August. I actually all of August. <laughs> I had um, not intended to participate in Jolly July this month. Instead, I've assembled a large box here, as you can see, that I have filled with bee and sunflower patterns. I overpainted this box from Dollar General. It was pink and purple, and I changed all of the colors to red. I um, repainted those roses myself. So I was really happy with how they turned out, and then I added a few bees on the front, not a ton. I wanted to find a bee box, but like I said, this one was $3, so it worked. I covered it with wax when I was done, so hopefully the paint won't scratch off. But let me show you all of the different things that are inside. Hopefully you can see and hear. I have a pretty odd setup here <laughs> that I won't show you, but if the camera moves a little bit, I apologize. I wanted to do a stash dive for my cross stitch capsule project that I've been doing this year. And I like the idea of like a FabFitFun box or a stitchy box where you get a curated collection. I'm kind of picky though, so <laughs> I really want to work on what I want to work on, not um, you know, what a stranger would pick. So I've made my own collection. I started with this project bag that I showed in my floss too, but I'm gonna make more of them. It's from, um, I think Riley Blake fabric that was out of print or it was last year's, kind of hard to find. It was on clearance when I got it. But I have some other fabrics that I found at Joann's that have sunflowers and bees. So whatever you like, to assemble you could use. And then inside of my box, um, I have a plethora of patterns as you can see. And I'm only gonna be choosing some of these to work on. This is one that's a priority. It's um, Prairie Schoolers, Prairie Seasons. I'm gonna try to focus on the whips of what I'm already working on. This was the sunflower that goes along the side. I'm sorry I don't have the main pattern of the summer one right there up in the corner. And it's not um, super huge, so it's a top to bottom. So hopefully I can get that finished on this felt and in my kitchen. So that's one pattern in the box. Another one is a little Be Well whip that I had put all of the threads together. Um, they're mostly just from my stash, DMC, a few weeks, like Cecil, Carolina, and 310 and white, just a lot of different pieces for this small stitch here. So that one is partially completed. It's not a very big piece. I intend to put that in a pillow. My cat might make an appearance here. He's right on the edge. <laughs> um, the other one I have already started is this yellow house sampler. I've showed it a couple times <laughs> already. It has a beehive and its words are going to say, um, gracious words are sweet as honey. So I would really like to put some work into this piece. I love this fabric I dyed myself and it is on the top three. So those three pieces I know I'm going to be choosing to work on. Um, and then I'd like some input from you on the other ones. If there's one in particular you'd like to see stitched then, or worked on, <laughs> no promises, then comment below. Miss McGuire, the Bee Charmer, is a really cute stitch. I have all the DMC included. I haven't found a scrap of fabric, but I don't think it'll be a big piece. And I intend to do this one without the grapes on top. Um, those weren't my favorite, and I really just want it to be this image here in a pin pillow or possibly on, I have some finishing items here I've collected too, on this um, plaque from Target Dollar Spot. I don't have the um, tag, but I think it was $3 last year. It's shaped like a honeycomb. And I think it would be really cute, possibly for this one or for some of the hands-on design pieces. So I put those things in my box too as I find things on clearance, I'll just, my intention is just, here he is, um, to stick all of my bee-related things and all of my sunflowers 
in my big box and I'm gonna choose one to carry forward as a whip and the rest will be put up until next summer. So I'll just see how much I can get done. This punch needle pattern is another one that I intend to kind of crop. You can see here the bee up in the left. I'm not as crazy about those orange and kind of serape colors. So I'll probably change those flowers to red and yellow or possibly just sunflowers. But see how that crops out there. I won't do the lamb when I trace it. It's from Primitive Needle Punch. Oh, I always get that wrong. Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine 2019 from the fall issue by Michelle Palmer of Painting Threads. It's just beautiful. Love that crow and the bee. It's very lifelike. So that'll be my punch needle project in the box. I also have, um, I might try to do some of this upper part of Queen Bee Flower Farm from Hands On Design. I have several of her pieces here in the little collection, but um, probably won't attempt to do the large farm for when I still have Rose Cottage for my summer collection, but this is a really pretty pattern. A lot of people have stitched, and I'm not planning to do it on black. I think I'll do it on natural. So that is an option. This one is another I probably won't get to. Many people have done. It's from Birds of a Feather, the Bitter Flower Sampler. Such a pretty design, and I love the bee. And the message, the bee, I think I'm gonna say makes. The bee makes honey out of the bitterest flower. All good messages. The honeyberry is on my stitch 10 challenge that I'm trying to complete or finish 10 and 20. So this one definitely I want to finish. It's not huge. It has um, some earthen that I had from a friend and I think there's flowers. Yeah, there are flowers on the back that are white. I intend to possibly do those in blue. I was reading that honey bees or um, bees in general, I think don't like the color red or they see it as black and so they're not as drawn to it. Cause I thought I would do red flowers, but I remembered reading that. So blue flowers on the back. Another berry I've already made, but I wanted to make another one for me. You can see back in my Instagram farther up that I made these for my mom with some yellow polka dotted ones to match. And it was so cute, but I'm gonna make it for me that you can do in just a couple days. And then this one I loved from Priscilla and Chelsea. I printed it off from Etsy. The Honeybee What's in My Cup Summer Series. Love that. That one might be cute on this frame here. I'm not sure, I'll just have to see how big it ends up stitching, but it's very quick, very small. So that one is gonna be a contender. And then here's the other ones I've shown before. I'll go quickly. This is a freebie from uh, Hands On Design, meant to be. She does a kind of anniversary piece each year from 20, 20 it says. I didn't realize this was this year's. Um, she does it in like sage greens and pinks, but I'm gonna do it in kind of the same palette that I'm doing most of my honey stuff in. Here's a honey thread key from Teresa Vanette. She's give, gifted this to us at the um, Silver Needle. Got some family members coming in, sorry. But that um, palette I think is what I'm gonna use instead of the pinks. And it also goes for this Humble Honey. It's the bee's knees. Um, actually, these colors here are pulled for that piece. So just some from Stash. And all of these are pretty small projects. Like I said, I won't get to all of them, but some of them are calling to me. This is a really cute um, embroidery piece from looks like KS, and I can't remember, a lot of you will probably know this designer, Katherine Schmidt, maybe. Um, I will link it below. It is an embroidery pillow. I think it is adorable, and it was $1 on clearance on her site. You basically just do this on some tan muslin and finish it as a tag with some ribbon at the top. Those are stitch lines around it. So I can't wait to do that. And I hope to do one for a gift for a special friend. So there's some embroidery. I like to mix it up, not just um, stitching, but also um, other crafts like this one here from Pinterest. 
is just some free um, clip art. And I intend to make this on um, it's either some chipboard or some harder cardboard and put ribbon at the top and cover it actually with beeswax that I have from my crafting times <laughs> making encaustic paper art. So this is going to be um, part of my bee display too. And these images are in a Pinterest board that also include all of these patterns and I invite you to come and look at that if you want some more inspiration or to see this again <laughs> without watching the video. This piece is one I've never seen anyone stitch before. I admired it on Etsy. It's by Good Flora Stitchwort, the name of the designer. She is from the UK, I believe. And what drew me to this piece, it's all DMC, is her artistry. I'm always impressed by someone that can use, you know, 20 stitches and capture that movement. Um, her name is Dame Crotal. Crotal. I don't know if I'm saying that right. She's finished. She's in her garden and taking care of her bees with her dog. And it just was a sweet image. I thought there's a bee up in the corner and all the honeycombs. So it's very primitive, but I feel like she really captured a sweet moment in time. And I wanted to share this pattern because I think it's really pretty. Like I said, Dame Crotal and the Bees by Good Flora Stitchwort on Etsy. It's a PDF download. She has a really pretty Santa one I want to do as well, but I haven't gotten that one yet. Speaking of Etsy PDFs, this is another one that I've never seen anyone stitch, but I admired. It has some Weeks Dye Works over dyes that I feel like I'm gonna pick up because I love the variegation in her dress and in the hives. I have a few of the weeks, but I don't have that red or that bourbon color. And this is Sunflower Garden by Sub Rosa. She's so talented. I always admire her pieces. So I might dye a piece. Um, I'd already kind of purposed this charcoal, but I'll probably dye another one. Um, this looks kind of blue in the photo, but I think that's just my printer. I think it's actually it's called charcoal fabric so there's that one almost done I also have a carryover whip from my silver needle retreat that I've already showed the bee skep from this design is by Teresa Minette it's an exclusive to the people that went to the um, class about samplers last November and I never finished it. So it's high on my list. She included some backing fabric from French General and all of the threads are on that bee skep um, that I've already showed and then set down and buried. But the threads all included, the um, chenille trim. There's just really no excuse not to have it done. I had already started the companion piece, the little house, which is here and it has bees as well. I did this while I was in Tulsa but I have on my finished 10 and 20, both of these pieces, like they're number nine and 10. I want to go ahead and get those done. I took the class, Teresa put together a beautiful arrangement. I've already finished the box here and shown it before, but I haven't done the inner pieces of it. Here's the little B um, pencil case that goes inside. I might use that for like a crochet needle or something else, but that is a cute little set that she put together. So I want to finish it. And that looks like I'm at the bottom. Here is, oh, I have two more things. Here's a Be Calm um, pattern by Not Forgotten Farm. It is free from the Stitch and Be Well pandemic stitches. And I had never finished it. So I have a piece of natural linen that I'll be putting that on. And I might change the color of this to blue just to brighten it up just a little bit. And the last thing I hope to do, um, or might do, is this primitive pattern by Denise Jones. I made quite a few of these already, but I've given away a lot of them. So you can make it grungy or you can make it a little brighter. I've made different versions. These all look a little different. But these are super fun uh, muslin crafts that you can put with your bee designs. I think they just go so well together and that's a little bit dark, but the pattern is only a couple of dollars and it has some instruction that I wouldn't have known without 
getting the pattern. So I encourage you to do that. I can't do a tutorial on these because this is in my design. That would be proprietary to her. So just some fun um, projects that I want to work on. Oh, there's one other one I didn't show. Sorry. This is from um, Snowflower Diaries. This is her free pattern. And instead of putting June on there, because I want to do word plays by Brenda Gervais, not necessarily this, this series, this would be such a cute pillow with another quote at the top. But I thought she did, she does such an amazing job with the details, that bear. Here's the, uh, the finished piece. Isn't that cute? So that's another option. I'm probably only going to pick two or three out of there. If there's one that you would particularly like to see stitched, Oh, and this little guy here. I'm going to use this possibly too. This was some Hobby Lobby Spring Shop. It was $3. I might tuck in a one of these as a finish. So if there is a particular one you'd like to see, please comment down below. And thanks for watching.